There are a number of ways to get your Google Pixel smartphone updated to the latest available patch or even OS. And if you're happy to take matters into your own hands, then you can actually skip the wait by sideloading each and every OTA update on your Google Pixel. And while this is an overdue tutorial video, we're going to show you how to do it, unless you're a proper tech nerd, in which case this tutorial probably isn't for you. But this is going to be how to sideload an OTA on your Google Pixel. Thanks for watching 9to5 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be notified about all our future uploads. A few bits of housekeeping first though, if you just want the processes, then use the chapters down below to skip ahead. Um, if you're worried though, the entire process is fairly simple, and while many hardcore Android fans out there will probably know exactly what to do, not everyone out there is adept at getting their phone updated manually. Well, firstly, there are a few differences as well in the kind of updates that you can install on your Android phone, and we need to explain to prevent any confusion and maybe problems later on. So monthly or regular updates are incremental, with full updates reserved for major releases. In this instance, an OTA or over-the-air update can be flashed with relative ease and will not restore or kind of reset any of your app or system settings when this update is applied. It just adds all of the new files to your phone and will continue as it has before. If you want to go back to a previous Android version or even a previous OTA update, then you will want what is called a factory image. And luckily we do have a dedicated guide on how to downgrade your pixel, which explains this process that you can find in the card on screen right now or in the video description below. To recap though, there are a few ways to get your pixel updated to that latest official Google OTA. You can just wait until your phone gets a notification, which is probably what most people do, and this will prompt you to download any waiting updates to your phone. This is normally the slowest method though. You can sort of force your smartphone to pull any waiting updates by heading to settings, system, system update, and then check for updates. This process is just marginally faster and can be done as soon as an announcement confirms that an update is available. However, like the OTA notification method, it can be a while before files are actually fully available. The quickest method to get the very latest update on your Google Pixel, or even indeed some other Android phones, is to sideload an official OTA file. Google offers a number of ways to do this, but both rely on access to a PC or laptop. As I mentioned, this method does tend to work on most Android devices out there, but you will need to obtain the official OTA files for your specific device manufacturer prior to attempting to sideload using this method but this one is more tailored towards Pixel series hardware. You'll need to use what is called ADB or Android Debug Bridge to sideload an OTA update on your Pixel. We recommend installing this on an easy to access place. Mainly, most of the time we'll put this unzipped platform tools package on a desktop for quick access when running commands. You can also download the latest platform dash tools zip file from the link in the description below. The universal ADB drivers from Clockwork Mod also make this process much easier if you are on a Windows machine versus the drivers already on your device. Alternatively, Nexus Tools from developer Corbin Davenport also offers a very simple way to ensure that you have the very latest version of platform tools on your Windows, Mac or Linux machine at all times. Nexus Tools has been written in Dart, so it can run on Linux and Mac OS, Windows, Windows Subsystem for Linux and Chrome OS. Once Nexus Tools is finished, you can also run ADB, Fastboot and other commands with zero problems or issues. And that might be one for many people out there who have multiple devices. Now though, before we even get started, we need to ensure that you have developer options enabled on your Pixel. You can do that by heading to your device settings, heading down to about phone, and then tapping the build number until a message confirms that you have developer options enabled on your phone. Now you will need to head into settings, system, advanced developer options, and you may need to expand a hidden menu for this. Scroll down to the debugging section and tap the allow USB debugging option. It's also worth noting that if you want to downgrade again at a certain point, you may also want to enable OEM unlocking, but it is important to note that you can still sideload OTA updates on your Pixel without this option being enabled. Before you attempt to sideload an OTA file on your device, you'll need a few things as well though. Firstly, we need to get the very latest OTA update that is available for your specific Pixel device. Google hosts all of the official builds for each Pixel on the dedicated developer site for these. It's important to pick the right OTA file for your device though, as this method will fail if you do attempt to in install the incorrect build for your phone. You can find OTA files with dates and carrier specific builds for each and every Pixel released down in the description below. 
and also with the code names attached. If regional builds also exist for your phone, it is important to sideload the correct OTA for your specific device as well. Doing so ensures that you have access to all the features available within your global market, and it also ensures that your carrier works with your phone. However, you can restore though as well if the experience or you do experience problems. To initiate the sideload process, you will need to boot your Pixel into what is called recovery mode. And this mode simply enables that sideloading process to take place. To access recovery mode, just fully power down your phone, then hold on the power button and the volume down button at the exact same time until you get to what is called the bootloader page. Using the physical volume buttons to navigate, just scroll down to recovery mode and to select this option, just tap the power button. Alternatively, if you have your smartphone connected via USB-C already, you can use the reboot recovery command, which is ADB reboot bootloader or a Mac dot backslash ADB reboot bootloader. Now you should see a smaller Android on your phone screen lying down with an exclamation mark over it. And when this screen is showing, just press the power button and volume up button for about a second to fully enter recovery mode. This might take a few goes and releasing the volume up button will just send you directly into what is called recovery mode. Now you can use those volume buttons again, just scroll down to apply update from ADB and select this option using the power button again. This will launch a mostly blank screen with a little bit of text near the bottom directing you on how to sideload and OTA file. Provided you follow those early steps that we mentioned to install ADB tools on your computer and have placed them in an easy to access folder or drive, then you can connect your smartphone to your computer if you haven't done so already. You'll need to open a command prompt or terminal window within the directory folder where you have that platform tools file saved. A quick method here is to locate the correct folder and type CMD into the address bar on Windows or shift click and tap open PowerShell window here. PowerShell is effectively the same as command prompt, so don't worry too much as it works or it should work just the same. If you're using a Mac and have placed a platform tools folder on your desktop, type dot backslash CD space desktop, then hit enter and then dot backslash CD space platform dash tools. To check if your pixel is being recognized by your PC and connected, you can always just enter ADB devices or dot backslash ADB device on Mac, and that should give you a small serial number or a number with details to confirm that it has been connected safely to your computer. As long as everything is in place, you can now sideload that OTA file. On Windows, ensure your command prompt window is directed to the ADB tools folder and type in ADB sideload or dot backslash ADB sideload on Mac. You'll then need to insert the file name of the original zip folder you downloaded from Google and then hit enter to start the OTA sideload process on your Pixel. If everything is working properly, you should see some dialogue on your computer and on the handset, it'll show the process of that sideload and installation process available. This might take a while and in some rare cases, this process can actually fail. If it does, you can just go through the process again. It can take multiple attempts for reasons we still don't fully understand. And in many cases, it can be using the cable or port on your computer. So using, or just make sure that you use the official device cables wherever possible. Once the OTA is done installing on your phone, you will be taken back to recovery mode. And the last step to jump into the new update is to select the reboot now option with your power button. Once your phone has rebooted, you should safely be updated with that very latest OTA. And a simple way to check if you followed all of these steps correctly and siloed the OTA file, it's just to head to settings, about phone, Android version, and this should be on the exact patch that you have side loaded, indicating that you've successfully managed to complete the process. And that is just how easy it is to sideload an OTA file on your Google Pixel, and the process itself is actually practically identical on many other Android phones and tablets out there too. So you can follow this even if you don't have a Google phone. Hopefully though, this has helped you get updated without too much stress, and if you do have any comments, slap them down in the comments section below, and we'll try to answer them as soon as we're able to. But it's worth noting that we can't necessarily provide step-by-step -step troubleshooting advice for everybody out there. With that said though, thanks for watching this pretty basic Android basics video, which we have created to help you get the most from your smartphone.